I am so excited to bring you my favorite booty workout. And it's the workout that brought my booty back after I lost it. And where did it go? Well, I am going to tell you. But first, let me tell you the three things that helped me bring it back. One, a high protein diet. Two, creatine. And three, heavy strength training. A stronger booty, or glutes as we like to call them, will mean fewer injuries for you and improved performance. Oh, and a nice butt. Besides looking great, improving performance, and decreasing your injury risk, glutes, strong glutes, can actually help with your posture. And they can also help improve your balance. All right, so you're all wondering, where did her booty go? You know, I didn't even realize it had gone anywhere, but somebody did point it out. And um, this was funny. If you don't know this already, I owned a spin studio for several years. And as a small business owner, you do whatever you have to do to just bring the best service to your community. And I was teaching way more classes than I probably really should have been teaching. Don't get me wrong. I loved it. But someone said, oh, poor Regan, she spun that nice round booty of hers right off. And I was like, I did? I did. So you all know, if you've been on this channel before, I talk about the importance of cardio, but way more the importance of strength training and how you can overdo the cardio to the point where you start to lose muscle. And you're probably thinking, how did you lose muscle spinning? Weren't you gaining muscle in your legs? Well, it backfires on you when you do too much. So the rate at which you're burning calories, if you're teaching two or even three classes a day, is so fast that it's hard to keep up calorie-wise with what you're putting in your body. And back then, I didn't eat nearly as much protein as I eat now. But let me jump back for one second about the person who said, I spun my booty right off. Even though I realized it was a little bit true, um, it's not okay to body shame anybody, whether it's about them being overweight or too skinny or too muscular or their booty is gone whatever not okay to body shame just wanted to get that out there but in my case they pointed out something that i just didn't even realize had slipped away because i was teaching so many classes it didn't give me time for my own strength training workouts i mentioned earlier that there are three things that helped bring my booty back one is getting plenty of protein. So I'm gonna link a video up here on how I eat my body weight in grams of protein every day. The other thing is um, I started taking a creatine supplement and I will leave that supplement down below as well as a couple of videos on creatine. And then the other thing was the heavy strength training. So today I am going to show you my favorite booty workout. Welcome to Boom 50 Fitness. My name's Regan and this is your channel for all things health and fitness in your 50s and beyond. All right, so let's dive right in to this workout. I'm going to be doing two rounds of every exercise and it's a booty kicking workout. If you are not used to this type of workout, please scale back. I do all the movements very slow and get the full range of motion, and that's how you should be doing it too. Don't rush through these because I want you to maximize this workout, and if you go too fast, you'll actually be making it easier on yourself. There is one exercise in there that we kind of do quick, um, but besides that one, just take it at the same speed as me. And this will be a great workout to come back to whenever you want a good booty workout. You can turn down the volume, crank up your favorite tunes, and just follow along with me. I promise you, if you do this booty workout uh, at least two times a week, giving yourself enough rest in between, you are going to notice a difference. 
not just in strength, but you're also gonna give yourself that nice little perky lifted booty. All right, and I have to address this real quick before you watch this workout video. I just filmed a regular workout and so, you know, when a workout's hard, you're not smiling the whole time. In fact, I look kind of miserable through a lot of it, but I gotta tell you, I'm not miserable. I love strength training, and I'm sure I had a podcast on in the back, and I got through it. But yeah, it's not smiles and laughing the whole time. In fact, I don't think I was, I probably didn't smile through any of it, but I got it done, and that's what's important. Get it done, people. Come on. Quick disclaimer, please check with your doctor before starting any sort of fitness program. And you'll notice that I use weights for most of these exercises, actually all of the exercises, uh, but feel free your first time around to go without weights. And if you want, just start with some light weights and then um, it's called progressive overload where you start to add in weight gradually. Let's start with number one. This is my favorite booty exercise. It is the most difficult, so after a good warm-up, this is what I love to start with. It's called the Bulgarian squats. Okay, here we go. So I am using one of my cubes, and the way to find out if a table or a bench is the perfect height is if you put your foot on top of it, your leg should be at a 90 degree angle or very close to it. So you will see I've got my foot in a pointed position and the reason you don't want your foot flexed and to be up on your toes is because you don't wanna be pushing off of that foot that is on top of the bench or whatever piece of furniture you choose to use. And so this is basically a one-legged squat. If your foot starts to cramp up and you need to flex and be on your toes, that's okay as long as you use the standing leg for pushing and lowering down. Okay, so the leg that's up it's just kind of hanging out there. I believe I just did 15. Shaking it out, moving on to the other side. I am using a body bar, but you could hold one big weight in front. You could hold one weight in each hand. Look, trying to get my balance there. Or you could use no weight. This is a very intense exercise. What you want to make sure is that you don't put that standing leg too far forward and turn it into a lunge. You want this to be a one-legged squat. And you'll notice I'm bringing my knee right down towards the floor. In fact, on a few of them, I actually feel the floor. So that's what you want to think about. If you can't get close to the floor, then you have your standing leg too far out in front. Coming down, pushing through that front heel. Now you may notice my knee is going past my toes slightly, and that is perfectly okay. It's very old school to say you can't let your knees go past your toes because on a daily basis our knees go past our toes. So it's okay to train that way. Shaking it out and moving on. All right, the number two exercise is also very difficult and that's why I knock it out of the way early. Now, for some of you out there, maybe the ones that I started with are not the most difficult ones for you. So you can mix this one up and do these exercises in a different order. Although, if done the right way, Bulgarian squats should be the hardest exercise for all of you out there. Uh, if you've done them before, you know. If you know, you know. But this number two exercise I absolutely love. This is a deep squat with your heels up. So your heels are up on some weights and you're just getting that booty so low. It practically kisses the ground. So I am getting into position here. I'm using 15 pound weights on the ground and I'm using my body bar again, which is 20 pounds. 
and your heels just go on top of those weights. And you'll notice this is such a great squat because look how low I get. And it feels fine on the knees. Yes, your knees will go past your toes, but this is a very, very functional exercise. So coming low, and you'll also notice I come low and then I give a slight pause at the bottom. Did you notice that? So if you're doing this on your own or you're joining me right now, get that little pause at the bottom with me before you push back up. Now, if you're used to doing squats and you just come down and up, down and up, that makes it a lot easier. It's that pause at the bottom that's really, really going to get into your quadriceps and into that booty. You're going so low. Now, I believe I do 25 of these, so this is a whole bunch. You can inhale on the way down and then exhale on the way up. Now, when I come to that standing position, I keep my knees soft, so they're not locked out right there. Coming down and coming back up. Your core is so tight. And the reason your core is really, really tight is because you want to support your low back on this. All right, almost there. Ah, oh, you are there, shake it out. Okay, next up, step ups. You'll see that I'm using one of my light up cubes and you wanna make sure when you put your foot up there that um, your leg is at a 90 degree angle. All right, so it's at that 90 degree angle. Make sure your foot is all the way on your step or your table, your bench, whatever you're using. And make sure that surface is really stable. Now I'm holding, oh, I believe it's a 25 pound weight on my right side. My right foot is all the way up. My heel's not hanging off. I am pressing through that heel. And then I'm just tapping that toe the, the toes on the left foot. Yep, just keeping those shoulders down and the face relaxed. Just a nice, steady tap up and slowly down. When you come down, try to land nice and softly into that foot. Oh, this is so good for the booty. And then switching on to the other side. I believe I did about 15 of those. Just tap it up. So again, my foot is placed all the way on that cube. My heel is not hanging off. I switch the weight to the left hand and I'm just pushing up and then tapping back down. My shoulders are down and relaxed. My face is relaxed. This will get your heart rate up too because you are working those large muscle groups. This again is another really, really functional exercise. Just tap it up and then coming down nice and slow. I love it. It's usually those last few reps that you feel the most. And those are the ones that count the most. All right, shake it out. Okay, this is the somewhat fast exercise that I mentioned. We're just doing a nice little booty tap squat, just up and down. So getting into position, I am choosing to use my 20 pound body bar again, but like um, the other exercise that we used the body bar for, which was uh, the Bulgarian squats, um, you can just use free weights. You could hold one big one in front. You could hold two, one in each hand down by your sides. Um, you pick, you can use no weights at all. I'm doing 25 of these, so notice my booty just taps the end of that bench, just down and up. You'll see how I lift up my toes a little bit in between each one. That's so I know I'm pressing through my heels and not my toes. My core is so tight. And we're just going for it. Yes, down and up. Perfect. Oh, surrenders. If you've never done a surrender before, don't do the one where we stay low. Do a full surrender where you're, you go all the way down, all the way up. 
And if you have never done them before, take it even slower than how I'm doing them. All right, here we go. This is the surrender. So the first five, I am coming up, but I'm staying low. So if this is your first time, come all the way up where you straighten up your legs. That's what I will be doing next. You'll notice that I'm leading with my right leg the whole time. So here I am coming all the way up. So down slow and then coming all the way up. Land softly into that knee. So the right leg goes back and then the right foot comes up. And then after this side, we'll switch so that the left leg leads. And I'll be doing the same thing where I stay low for the first set, as low as I can stay. So it's about halfway down in a squat. If you can get lower, get lower. Oh, this is so good for your booty and your quads. And it's a great cardiovascular workout because your heart rate's gonna go up. Oh, I'm using a 10, or not a 10, a 12 pound medicine ball here. But you could use one weight, two weights, no weight, you pick. I think this is the last one. Yes, good job. Okay, and I love this last exercise. I call this a ballet squat, a wide squat with the toes out, froggy squat, sumo, You'll hear all kinds of names for it. I call it the ballet squat. And um, I love this exercise. This is not the hardest one um, out of the ones we've done. In fact, this is probably the easiest one for me, but I make it kind of hard at the end. So enjoy. Getting into position. This is that ballet squat. So I put my toes so that they're pointed out. And notice as I'm coming down, I am lifting up one of my heels. I lift it up as high as I possibly can. It actually doesn't look like I'm lifting it very high um, on this video, but I'm getting my heel up there. And I'm just coming down low. I believe I'm using that 25 pound weight again. Um, I feel like using two weights, um, they kind of get in the way. So I usually just do one, but you should use whatever works for you. So this not only gets the booty, but it gets the abductors and the adductor muscles. So those are your inner and outer thigh muscles. And I believe I do 20 of these and then I amp it up. Oh, here we go, getting low and then just lifting one heel at a time. And then I'm doing 20 of these. Low, this is an isometric hold. So you're feeling that burn. I know I'm feeling it at this point. Lifting, lifting. You're almost there. Come on. All done. Shake it out. All right, you guys, this is round two, and I am going to stop talking and let you guys enjoy the rest of the workout on your own. You can turn up the fun music that I'll be playing, or you can mute it and play your own fun music. But we're gonna do round two together, and I just won't be giving you all the same directions that I gave you in round one. If you still need those directions, just repeat round one again, because round two is actually the same exact thing, just without all the talking. And I actually show you the exercises from different angles. But enjoy this workout. Stick around for the very end because um, I have some things that I talk about at the very end of this video that I know you'll be interested in. So enjoy the rest of the workout.
did amazing good job you got through it now just join me for a nice little stretch I'm just shaking it out and I'm starting with a quad stretch so you can lean up against a wall you can hold on to a wall but my standing leg has a soft knee and I grabbed my foot with my hand oh I'll show you from the side so right foot, right hand, and I'm doing three things here. I'm pressing my right hip forward, I'm squeezing my booty as tight as I can, and I'm pressing my foot into my hand as hard as I can. Okay, releasing it down, going into a hamstring stretch. Notice how I'm keeping my back nice and straight here. Strong and straight. Knee is soft, foot is flexed. If you can reach those toes, you can pull them back like I'm doing, and that will get into your calf a little bit. And now I'm just pivoting out my standing foot, and I'm getting some inner and outer thigh. Flexing that foot, stretching it all out. So important to stretch every single day. We're just doing a quick stretch here today, you guys. But if you have more time, you know, maybe get on the floor and do some extra stretching when we're all done. So I'm flexing back that foot again, pulling those toes back. If you can't reach your toes, that's okay. My core is nice and tight here, so it's supporting my low back. Pivoting out that standing foot again, and then dropping down. Yes, that feels good. I love it. And then slowly coming back up. Let's just take a few deep breaths. Big inhale. Big exhale. Big inhale. And big exhale. Let's do one more. Big in. And big out. A few little spinal twists here. I'm so proud of you guys. You did amazing. Stick around for my little outro that's coming up. All right, this is just stretching out your chest a little bit. I know we didn't work upper body, but it's always important to stretch out. All right, you guys, that is the workout. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you're out there and you're thinking, wait a minute, what about deadlifts and hip thrusts? Yeah, I do those too. However, these are the favorite ones that I picked and I love the sequence that I do. And sure, I do hip thrusts and I do deadlifts, but I just wanted to give you a few of my favorites. I mean, not that deadlifts and hip thrusts aren't my favorites, but, and they're very, very effective. But what I can say about all of these exercises is they're very functional. So all these movements that you would be doing all through the range of motion, they're things that you could be doing on your own. And so at our age or whatever age you are, um, we wanna be able to do movi movements that we can continue through our whole lives. So I think it is really, really important to be able to get into a deep squat. I also think it's really, really important to be able to do an exercise like a surrender so that when you're on the floor and you're playing with grandchildren, you're able to get back up without help. So yes, function, so important. I would love to hear any of your comments out there, whether you already do these types of exercises, what ones you would add to this program. Um, I'd love to hear how you felt 
during and after this workout. I really hope you add it to at least one or two of your days. And I guess that's about it. If you liked this video, please don't forget to do all the things. It really helps my channel. Give it a thumbs up. If you haven't smashed that subscribe button already, go ahead and do that. Ring that notification bell so you're the first to know when my next video drops. My name's Regan. This is Boom 50 Fitness, your new BFF. I will see you next Thursday. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'll see you next time.